Hi, I want to talk to you today about um, sin and confession and repentance and forgiveness. I'm going to read to you from Nehemiah. Uh, I'm just going to read to you from chapter 1 and verse 6. And uh, he's praying. He's, he's heard about the, uh, the plight of the people who have returned from exile. And he begins to pray. And this is part of the prayer. He says, I confess the sins uh, we, we Israelites, including myself, and my father's family have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly towards you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, and laws you gave your servant Moses. What he's doing is um, engaging in something that people today call identificational repentance. It's a big term, isn't it? But he's repenting for his own sins, but also for his family and his nation, for the present and the past. Now, some people say we can only really repent of our own personal sins, but there is a corporate solidarity in sin which extends over time. We are implicated in the sins, sins of the group that we are part of. It could be a nation, could be an ethnic group, could be a tribe, um, could be a class, could be a denomination, could be a city. And the sins of the past stretch into the present. We reap what previous generations have sown, in fact. Some people say, well, I can't really repent of the sin of slavery because I wasn't around. If I had been, I would have opposed it. And so people resist examining the past, the history of their city or their, their organization. But we reap the benefits of slavery. There are cities in Britain uh, which uh, were built, their prosperity was built on slavery and they still enjoy a certain amount of prosperity today. In fact, there are parts of London as well, buildings, businesses, which were based on slavery and colonialism and ripping off people in the two-thirds world. And we still enjoy the benefits of that. Now we can be quiet about that and just enjoy the benefits or we can choose to repent on behalf of the corporate sins of our people and join with movements, Christian or non-Christian, that are working for justice in the present because obviously repentance needs to be fleshed out in action. So. What Nehemiah does is he acknowledges that uh, the, the Israelites are in the situation they are in because of their previous sins, and he repents on behalf of them as a member of that people group. And he begins then to take action. So I think we need to pray not only for our own sins, for repentance, for forgiveness, but also the sins of our political units, whatever they may be, and bring them to God in prayer. And that can become a channel for God to operate and an opportunity for us to begin to act. Father God, I repent on behalf of my own country, slavery, colonialism, exploitation, the destruction of your planet in the environment and I pray Lord God that you'll bring real change to this country and to others and I pray Lord God you'll use all of us including myself to rebuild to make fresh starts Amen Thank you So today's Thursday I'll take a couple of days off Friday and Sunday back again Sunday morning I'll be preaching at uh, King's Cross 
uh, part of our relaunch in the autumn. So uh, if you're part of the church and watching this and you're available, please come and join us. Our midweek service, Breathe, will restart next week. So that's it. God bless you. God be with you. And he is with you. Amen.